Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different. Um, this is probably one of the strangest requests that I've had, but uh, anyway, I've been told that by some of my viewers, actually just one viewer, that they listen to my videos to put them to sleep. Now, I like to think that math is a little more exciting than that, but, you know, whatever. So anyway, this video is for them and also for all the other people that, you know, stay up till 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or 2 a.m. or whatever while we're just watching math videos on YouTube for whatever reason. So this is for you guys. So anyway, we are going to be integrating secant x dx and this is a pretty cool integral because it includes a lot of other things like use substitution it has trig functions even has a little bit of partial fractions and of course it requires some cleverness so we are going to be using all these things along with some cleverness and we are going to integrate secant x so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to start off by rewriting this as 1 over cosine x dx. And this is just the definition of secant. And then I'm going to rewrite it a little more using some of the cleverness I just spoke of. And I'm going to write it as cosine x over cosine squared x dx. And the reason why I want to do that is because... I can now use a trig identity on the denominator, and so I can rewrite it like this. Cosine x over 1 minus sine squared x dx. And again, this step just comes from the fact that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. And this should be something that we all know and love, this lovely trig identity right here okay so anyway let's go ahead and move on so we can just continue playing around with what we have right here and with a little bit of luck we can arrive at the following I'm gonna factor out a cosine X right there and I recognize that this denominator is actually a difference of squares 1 squared is 1 and then sine squared is sine squared so I can get 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. And of course, we can't forget our dx right there. I know some of you guys in the comments have gotten on to me about that before, so I'm going to pay extra close attention to not leave this off. Anyway, the next thing that I realize is that this denominator has two factors, and usually that's indicative of using partial fractions. So let's go ahead and try to decompose this fraction using partial fractions. So I want 1 over sine x. Whoops, let me erase that real quick. I want 1 over 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. I want this to equal some number a, which we don't know right now, over 1 minus sine x plus b over 1 plus sine x. So we are going to deconstruct this fraction into its partial fractions, where we are solving for a and b. And the way that we do that is we get this right-hand side under a common denominator, which gives us a times 1 plus sine x plus b times 1 minus sine x all over 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. So we have an equality right here and right here, and the denominators, they can cancel, and what we are left with is 1 equals a times 1 plus sine x plus b times 1 minus sine x. And I can rearrange that a little bit. I'm going to write this as a plus b plus 
a minus b times sine x. So from this, we actually get two equations because this left-hand side is really 1 plus 0 times sine x. And so the coefficients on the sine have to be equal. So 0 has to equal a minus b. And also the constants on the left-hand and right-hand sides have to be equal. So a plus b has to equal 1. And so we get a plus b is equal to 1. So here's our first equation, and here's our second equation. And what this tells us is that a has to equal b. And the second equation tells us that both of these equal 1 half. So now I can use this information and plug it back up into here. And so what I get is that 1 over 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x is actually equal to 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and factor that out because they're both the same. So 1 half times 1 over 1 minus sine x plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. And so we can use this information back into our integral. I know it's kind of a little far back there, but we can backtrack no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this integral as the integral of cosine x times, and then the partial fractions. Oh, wait, I can't forget my divided by 2, this factor of 2 right there. I'm going to go ahead and bring that outside as well. So 1 over 1 minus sine x plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. And then our dx. So now I can actually write this as two separate integrals because integration is a linear operator. So I can rewrite this as the integral of 1 half times cosine x over 1 minus sine x and then dx and then plus 1 half the integral of cosine x over 1 plus sine x dx. So the next thing that we can do is just a little bit of u substitution. So I'm going to treat each of these integrals one at a time. So I'll call this one our first part, and I'll call this one our second part. So let's go ahead and deal with the first part real quick. So if we let u equal the denominator, which is 1 minus sine x, then we can come up with an expression for du dx, which is just equal to negative cosine x. So when we make this substitution, what we get for this first integral is 1 half, and then we get a negative from the this negative value right here, and then times the integral of 1 over u times du. And we know what this integral is right here. We've done this plenty of times. And we know this is just negative 1 half times the natural log of u. And we can make this substitution back. And what we get is negative 1 half times the natural log of 1 minus sine of x. And I'm not going to worry about my constant of integration just yet, but I will remember to take care of it later. So anyway, we can move on to the second part now. And it's going to be very similar to this part, except for we are going to let u equal 1 plus sine x. And therefore, du dx is going to equal cosine x. So we don't have this negative on this one right here. And so when we make the substitution, we actually get 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du which is equal to 1 half times the natural log of u, and then we can make that substitution back, which is equal to 1 half times the natural log of 1 plus sine of x. So for our final answer, all we have to do is take this first part and add it to the second part, or in other words, we can take this and add it to this. So when we do that, I'm going to add the second part first. So 
you get one half times the natural log of one plus sine of x, and then minus one half times the natural log of one minus sine of x, and then plus our constant of integration. So this is our answer, but if we know anything about natural log or logarithms in general, then we know that we can express this in a more convenient form. Okay, so let's go ahead and take advantage of the properties of logarithms. So we know that whenever we subtract two logarithms, it's equivalent to division in the argument. So I can rewrite this as one half the natural log of one plus sine of x over one minus sine of x. And I can rewrite this further as one half the natural log of one plus sine of x over one minus sine of x, and then I can multiply through by a fraction that's equivalent to one. So I can multiply by sine of x plus one times sine of x plus one. And so on the bottom we get the difference of squares, and therefore I can rewrite it like this. One half times the natural log of one plus sine of x squared over, then we have difference of squares right here. So I can write that like one minus sine squared of x. And just don't forget to keep our plus c floating around. So this is equal to one half the natural log of one plus sine of x squared over cosine squared x plus c. So right here, I just use that same trig identity that we used at the very beginning of this video. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this in just a slightly more simple form. I'm going to write it like this. Basically, I'm just going to factor out that squared power. Whoops. Cosine of x and then squared. And once again, if we know anything about logarithms, we know that this is actually equal to 2 times 1 half the natural log of 1 plus sine of x over cosine x. And this is just the exponent rule of logarithms. When you have a power inside the argument of a logarithm, then you can bring that out to the outside, like I did right here. And I just realized I forgot to keep that plus c right there. It's very important. Don't forget your plus c. So finally, I can split this argument over the denominator and rewrite it like this. The natural log, this 2 over 2 cancels out to 1. Uh, so the natural log of 1 over cosine x plus sine x over cosine x, and then plus our c. And what we realize is that this is actually the natural log of secant x plus tangent x and plus c. So the integral of secant x with respect to x is actually equal to the natural log of secant x plus tangent x, and then plus our constant of integration. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'm going to purposely save this video for a late Friday night or Saturday night because I know a lot of you viewers out there are probably, you know, it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m. on a Friday night, Saturday night. And instead of going out with your friends, you're probably just in bed watching some YouTube videos on math. So don't worry, I'm not here to judge. But uh, anyway, this video is for you guys, and I will see you guys next time.